NHL 23 is not good. That's the title of the video, the first line of this script, and it's sure to be a bit divisive. As you clicked on to the video itself, you likely already had your mind made up as to whether or not you agree or disagree with that statement. I want to say right off the bat, though, if you enjoy NHL 23, this is not an attempt to get you to change your opinion. I'm not here to yuck your yum, as the saying goes. I'm genuinely happy that you're able to enjoy the game, and honestly, I wish I could. This wasn't a video that I was expecting to make. Now, some of you, you can take what I just said, and hey, everything's good. All good. No problems. Others, well, I'm sure I'll be hit with the typical EA game changers trying to ruin the game, get good, you can't do this anymore, and you're sad about it, blah, 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 and that's fine, too. Those people aren't likely to have been familiar with me and what we've done on this channel, Twitch, etc., for years now, and that's all right. You make a video like this, you expect the comments to be a little bit of a circus. That said, why have I labeled NHL 23 as not good? While we'll mostly go mode by mode, I wanted to say this first about the gameplay. I have been against the general direction of gameplay for years now. Anyone who has frequented this channel knows that very well. In general, my stance is that the gameplay is too fast for its own good, leading to a lot of tools, especially on the defensive side of things, being labeled as useless or not worth the risk. Primarily, something like net front tie-ups on defense or shot blocking, uh, often not being worth the potential tripping call. There's a way to have fast gameplay that replicates the speed of the sport without the game being unnaturally fast as it is currently I personally like to call it TikTok hockey. TikTok I don't know. It's very much catered, though, to the offensive side of things. Fortnite esque, where it's all about offense and posting sick clips for likes and views, brah. Now, don't get me wrong. Goals often equal fun. No one wants to play a game that replicates the dead puck era with 1 0 overtime victories every game. But it is about balance, and I feel like they aren't hitting the mark in that regard. You have poor collision detection still, invisible walls, awkwardly still having body checking act like a static button in press while it's attached to an analog option? Seriously, why is this still a thing? The chance is right there to do what NHL 04 attempted to do, but you actually have the technology to realize it now. The further you press the stick, the more you commit to the hits, meaning if you miss time it, you miss and miss battle. It's right there! Not to mention, aside from last chance uh, you know, options, which in fairness are a good addition, there's not much else. The elephant in the room is crossplay, which isn't in the game at launch. This took up the majority of the time and resources when it came to the development of the game, so it leaves you with the idea of, well, I hope you like the gameplay of 22 with some minor tweaks because major changes aren't happening this year. I could give out about the gameplay in a lot of other ways, but I will spare you. We have more to get to. So let's go mode by mode from here. Hockey Ultimate Team, hot. Not my area of expertise anymore. But anyone even remotely paying attention to that side of the community has seen controversy on a near daily basis since the game launched. Hut Champs matchmaking has been broken, uh, new strategies are broken, games sometimes just don't count, rewards have been late, rewards have been incorrect, there's the entire debate over rivals and its rotating themes, there's the new fantasy hockey event that has been labeled one of the worst in the history of the mode, really only serving to continue the flood of daily cards, feeling like nothing more than an attempt to get people to open as many packs as possible, I mean, for the love of God, look at how many fucking tabs there are featuring new cards. If I missed anything, friends of mine such as Thrash Gaming, Nooch TV, Henrik, No Sleeves, you know the guys people will shout from the rooftops are ruining the game even though they're fighting to make it better, uh, they'll tell you all about the mode's shortcomings. The only real positive I've seen is the addition of women into the mode, which of course some people have complained about, uh, we typically call them incels. Uh, great for the women's game, along with Sarah Nurse being a cover athlete, so good stuff there. Uh, so proclaims me the White Knight 2G24, or whatever I'll be called in the comments by at least one of the previously mentioned incels. There's World of Chell, still maybe the most cringe thing about this game, just the, oh my god, Chell is, it's the worst. The mode itself virtually the same as it was last year with slight tweaks to character building as the only real standout. Uh, the highlight, I suppose, is human goalies are actually allowed to be competent this year, hopefully for the long term. Trust me, I'm backing you goalies and begging EA not to nerf you guys, but to also fix some of the still long-standing issues that you guys still have to deal with. It's been nice to see you guys in that community get a little bit of love. Shout out to my bro, Terrio. 
Versus mode. I mean, the strats are broken and there's an issue with private matchmaking. Have fun. Hut rush and threes online are still there. Cool. For the offline modes, we have be a pro, which hasn't been touched. With potential quality of life improvements such as managing training or altering cutscene frequency being ignored, as well as certain X factors being locked behind certain builds. You guys really have nothing to sink your teeth into. Good friend of the channel and fellow uh, co-host of the Tukey's Take podcast, which you can watch right here on YouTube or listen everywhere podcasts can be heard. Uh, Endo Mills, he's gone back to NHL 20 on his streams and is having significantly more fun with Beer Pro. Tournaments through playoff mode, as you see on the screen here. Let's be honest, it's all the same. Why waste time? Although I will say it's a shame that the license for the double IHF modes won't allow for usage uh, in franchise mode. The you know one way those features would actually be used outside of Ultimate Team. That brings us to my area of expertise within the series, franchise mode, rosters, and presentation. I'll start off with the latter because there isn't too much to say aside from what a disappointment. I said in my trailer breakdown that I was concerned that we wouldn't see enough of the new intros, and unfortunately, I was proven correct. While the new on-ice projections are fantastic, you rarely see them. Hell, NHL 2K10 had on-ice projections, as did prior EA games. You can't get too much of a pat on the back for this anyway, and to barely see them is brutal. Same with the anthems, a great addition that prior games had, but the second the anthem ends, it's puck drop, there's nothing else, no stats, talking points, nada. Playoff-wise, you're lucky to see the colorful thundersticks. The only presentation points that feel like a big deal are the leaderboards after a goal, which are nice, and the new cup presentation where you get to choose who gets the cup next, but... Even then, that still doesn't quite match up to what we had seen with the likes of NHL 2K10 with the ability to fully skate the cup around the ice manually. So presentation, in general, feels like it's fallen short. Franchise mode. I've said it before and I'll say it again in regards to its major addition in Custom League. It's a great feature that we got at the wrong time. It's fancy doors and rims on a PT Cruiser. The core of the mode itself is broken. Along with save files disappearing, we still have... Broken trade values, teams not recognizing that they actually have cap space, AI team management is still brutal with the AI not understanding how to actually build a team, coaches don't know how to properly manage lines, nor do they care at all about putting a player in their proper position, offer sheets are broken in that you don't have to give up picks to get players, hell, you don't even need the right picks to successfully offer sheet someone. Generated players still wear college helmets and have the same skating style. The record book still doesn't work properly. The next issue, it affects rosters as well. 2007 wasn't added as a draft year, so players like Michael Misa and Gavin McKenna won't win the Calder because it doesn't recognize them as rookies. And if you try to edit them off the main menu, the game will crash due to the conflict with their birth year not technically existing. I could go in-depth on the AI's horrific management, whether with team building or coaching, but it's stuff I've covered before, and it's so needlessly frustrating that I'm not even touching the mode at this point. Other issues with the rosters, aside from sharing not being cross-platform, is the absurd amount of shortcomings with EA's provided rosters. Former first-round picks with just within the last couple of years having low potentials and being instantly overshadowed by generated players. Player height and weights not being able to be edited, meaning someone like Montreal's Arbor Jackeye has had the same height and weight since his first year in the game back in NHL 20 or NHL 19, I believe. Here you go. Here's the screenshot. You also still have retired and duplicate players flooding the free agent list. All of this, and let's be honest, some of the things I probably overlooked, results in this game feeling like the worst attempt since the jump from NHL 14 to the next-gen versions of NHL 15, a game with admittedly decent gameplay, but literally no depth of modes whatsoever. As time goes on, there's a reason why a game like NHL 14, which in my opinion was good, continues to trend towards mythical status amongst the majority of the community. A good game can appear to be the GOAT game when a franchise continues on, yet fails to reach its true potential, and that's where we appear to be at this stage. Like I said at the start, if you enjoy NHL 23, don't let my or others' opinions change your mind. Continue to enjoy the game. I wish I could. But I don't really touch the game at this point. I've gone back to playing my personal favorite hockey game of all time, NHL 2K10, on stream lately. Funny enough, my video from a few years ago regarding 2K10 is still my most watched in channel history. Wonder why that is. I digress. NHL 23 has unfortunately been a massive disappointment. As blunt as that is, it's the best way I can sum up my thoughts on the game at this point in time. I have no 
content plans with the game right now. No roster editing scheduled, anything like that. Hopefully they can get the game up to a decent enough point where that proves to be worth my time. But in the meantime, this game isn't worth my time. My time's more valuable than that. So, hey, you might see different stuff on the channel here in the near future. Uh, if it gets views, cool. If it doesn't, whatever. I'm at least going to be making content and playing games that I can actually have some fun with. So that's cool. Thank you guys for watching. I, uh, <laughs> I look forward to the uh, previously labeled circus of a comment section. I'm sure it'll be fun. I'll catch you guys next time.